Hi. During the recent State of the Nation speech, Vladimir Putin again played the nuclear card, and uh, many people become uneasy with the word nuclear because nuclear uh, presupposes the destruction of humanity, the destruction of our civilization. And uh, Russia has been playing this card very often, and in this video, I want to discuss conceptually how Russia sees the use of nuclear weapons. And the first thing that I would like to say is that nuclear weapons are different. There are very strong nuclear weapons, like uh, strategic nuclear weapons that really can destroy an entire city. But there are smaller nuclear weapons, like tactical nuclear weapons, Currently, uh, Russia has some warheads with less than one kiloton, meaning that uh, Russia, in this case, using such uh, weak, such low yield uh, warheads, nuclear heads, would be able to destroy maybe two or three blocks. Radiation would remain contained, but it is a nuclear weapon. And the point here is more psychological than tactical. And uh, why? Well, Russia sees the use of nuclear weapons within the deterrence uh, concept. The West has two ways of looking into deterrence, or there are two concepts of deterrence in the West. Deterrence by denial, when one country denies access to the other, for engaging in warfare, and deterrence by punishment, meaning that if one country attacks the other, there is retaliation, and both countries will lose. And this is basically uh, the idea, the concept, uh, giving base to nuclear deterrence. If both countries have nuclear weapons, one will not attack the other because of the fear of retaliation. Nevertheless, the Russians have two different concepts for deterrence. The first one is what they call strategic restraining or limiting. That's, that comes from the word Sderjivani in Russian that literally means containing. And this is a very ample, a very broad concept, uh, including actions at the tactical level to impede the, the enemy to, to engage in some action, but also at the very grand strategic level, including the idea of containment, when one country will try to contain the other. Uh, so, so um, it also includes, one could argue, that it also includes the both Western concepts of deterrence by denial and deterrence by punishment. The second way that the Russians see deterrence is deterrence by uh, coercion, or rather deterrence by intimidation. And um, the idea, this idea of deterrence by intimidation, by coercion, is directly connected with the idea of nuclear, with the idea of using nuclear weapons. And uh, since uh, the president of France, uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron, last week suggested that uh, NATO should send troops to, to Ukraine, and uh, although Germany immediately uh, answered that uh, instead of troops should be better to increase the, the support, to increase the help in the form of weapons and, um, and, uh, and money and financial resources. And the last thing Russia needs is the direct involvement of NATO troops in the Ukraine war, because uh, it's been challenging for Russia to advance, notwithstanding the fact that Russia uh, self-proclaimed as the second uh, strongest armed forces in the world. If you see, like, a, there is a clear stalemate in the war right now. As a result, if the West is not increasing the level of support, not sending more weapons and financial resources to Ukraine, this war will result in a war of exhaustion, where Russia then has uh, a clear advantage because of the number of people 
that it has been willing to send to die. So basically, this is to say that Ukraine has less resources. Ukraine has uh, a smaller population and so on. And in this case, it's just a case of, of, of war, of, of exhaustion. Now, when Russia, when does the Russian nuclear doctrine foresee uh, using nuclear weapons? In two situations. The first situation is when the very uh, existence of Russia as a state is at stake. And, uh, well, I cannot believe that uh, because of, of the war in Ukraine, the very existence of Russia as state, as a state, would be threatened. The second uh, issue is when Russia is attacked by, by another actor, and this actor is too strong for Russia's conventional forces. To win. This idea comes already from the times of the Soviet Union, when the Soviet Union understood that it had a, a, a strategic disadvantage compared to NATO troops. And Russia still feels this way. So the idea is if NATO attacks Russia, they would use nuclear weapons to compensate the asymmetry of force. Obviously, NATO is not attacking anybody. And um, this is just like a, uh, Russia's understanding of its own fragilities, or rather, this is the expression of Russia's understanding its own fragilities. In this sense, I, I wouldn't be very preoccupied of Russia using nuclear weapons, even if that wants, in the in the in the near time, and um, unless the situation degrades to such. A point where then the very existence of the Russian state is at stake. At the same time, last week, the Financial Times presented two, um, two articles, one discussing uh, Russian military exercises near the Chinese border, where uh, Russia used nuclear weapons, and the second one uh, leaked documents um, showing uh, a very low threshold for Russia using also nuclear weapons, but uh, these are tactical, not strategic nuclear weapons, so they are uh, nuclear weapons of low yield. That said, I would argue that uh, considering the concept of deterrence by intimidation, deterrence by coercion, and considering also the, that Russia use um, reflexive control all the time, I would argue that uh, probably, like uh, because like a leaked military documents, it doesn't sound very, uh, very. I mean, like uh, these things don't don't happen all the time. And why and how the Financial Times uh, uh, had access to to such documents? I would say that rather the Russian wanted the Financial Times to have these documents and to publish such articles as an instrument of reflexive control. We think the scope of deterrence by intimidation exactly to intimidate uh, policymakers and um, the society in the West, and making people apprehensive, and and as as I said, a form of deterrence. Thank you for listening. I wish you all the best, a great day, and a great week. Goodbye.